All right, so what is up guys? Welcome to the fourth part of this chatbot tutorial. And in this video, we are going to be going over making the pre-made responses or the way that the robot is going to know how to respond to our messages. So to do this, we have to go straight to our Java file and inside here, we'll click on the com package and we are going to create a few objects inside the utils package. And to do that, all we have to do is right click on the package, click on new, and we're gonna click on Kotlin file slash class and then click on object. And inside here, the first one we want to create is the time object. And the only thing that this is going to do is retrieve the time for the user. So when they ask what time it is, we will get a timestamp and that will be displayed as a response. So all we have to do inside here is create a function that will return a string of timestamps. So let's just do that. So function timestamp, and that's going to return a string. And inside here, the first thing we want to get is the timestamp. And to do this, all we have to do is convert the system time milliseconds to a timestamp. So just add this timestamp from the SQL. And inside here, we're just going to get the system dot current time in milliseconds. Then we want to format this time so we can get a proper display. And to do that, we just have to create a simple date format. So we'll type in value SDF, which st stands for simple date format. And that's going to equal a simple date format. And finally, inside here, we will put what we want it to look like. And we only want the hour in 24 hour format. So we'll add two capital H's and also the minutes which can be two lowercase m's. And that will take care of just displaying the time. If you want to make a date pattern, you're gonna also have to include the day, the year and all of that, which can be found in my GitHub repository, but we're gonna do it a bit different in this tutorial. So you will only get the time. And then right below, we're gonna create a value called time. And that's going to equal our formatter, which will format the date of the timestamp we got. So we'll just type in that. And then we have to call timestamp dot time and the last thing to do inside here is actually return our time to string and that's all we have to do to create the timestamp up next we're actually going to go to my github repository and click on the app folder and inside there we'll click on the source click on main and click on this java.com chatbot and we will click on utils and inside here we're going to click on the solve math Kotlin file, because this is the logic that we'll be using to make the robots understand how to solve the math equation we give it. So let's just go ahead and copy all of this, starting with import and ending with the last curly bracket. And then we can go back to our Android Studio project and create a new object. So inside the utils package, we're gonna right click on that and click on new Kotlin file class. It's gonna be an object and it's gonna be called solve math, math and click on object. And then inside here, we can just paste that in and I'll explain really briefly what it does, just in case you're confused. So the way this works, it takes a string, which will be our mathematical equation, and it will dissect that string and turn it into an actual mathematical equation so that it can actually compute it and then return a result. And the reason we have to do this is because we cannot just turn a string to a math equation. I thought it was that simple, but we actually do have to pass it and we need to separate everything into separate items so it can actually make the calculation. So the way this works is the first thing we do is remove all of the spaces and that will help us find where we can have the math equation. So if there's an empty space, it will turn it into nothing and then we will log the math equation. So with that, you'll be able to see that everything will be compressed and that will help the program understand how to make it work. The next thing you have to do is check which operator the equation contains. So in case our new equation contains a plus symbol, it will split that plus symbol and take the numbers on each side. And then it will add those numbers separately and give us the result. So we have to do a lot of splitting and we have to really separate everything inside the string. And that's why this mathematical equation object is only valid for simple equations, such as one plus one or 22 times 22. You cannot add 22 times 22 times three. It only works with two integers and one operator. And that's why this is a very simple math parser. If you want to learn more about this, of course you can go and type it in in Google. You'll find out that they have a lot of complex solutions to make this actually work so you can essentially create a calculator. But for this example, this is enough. Our friend should only be able to help us with very basic math equations. And up next, we can actually go ahead and create the actual bot response object, which will be taking care of all of the responses. And these two objects we just created will be used inside this main bot response 
object. So let's go ahead to our utils folder and right click on it and click on Kotlin file slash class and click on object one more time. But this time we're gonna call it bot response and click on enter. And the first thing we're gonna do inside here is create a function called basic responses. And that's going to take a message, which is going to be of type string. And it's going to return a string depending on what message we decide to insert. And the first thing we want to do inside here is create two values. And the first one's going to be a value of random, which is going to equal a number from zero to two. So that will give us three different numbers. And we just have to call dot random at the end. And right below that, we're gonna turn the message we received above into another message, which is going to equal the message that we've inserted in the constructor to lowercase. So we'll be able to use that a lot easier. Then we're gonna create a when expression that's going to return a string depending on what message we insert. So to do this, we'll type in return, when, and create a block. And then inside this block, we can get started with actually creating the commands. So for example, the first thing we want to create is when the user types hello to the program, what will the program say? And to do this, we just have to type in when the message dot contains and inside here we just type in hello then we need to create the arrow and create a block and inside here we want to make it so our bot can return different responses even if the user types hello we don't want it always to say hello back sometimes we wanted to say hello how are you or hello how are you doing and to do this we're going to use our random value up here so we're going to add a nested when statement and that's going to say when random and when random is equal to zero, then we're going to return the response hello there with an exclamation mark. Otherwise we can return the response up. And finally down here, we can go ahead and return the response one giorno in case it's feeling terribly Italian. Otherwise, if none of this works for some odd reason, we're just going to type in else because it wants us to add an else block and we're just gonna return error. And that will take care of the first response. Then we can go ahead and copy this one and paste it right below it. And we're gonna change this to how are you? So when the message contains how are you, we can return a response that says, I'm doing fine, thanks for asking. Otherwise it can return I'm hungry or it can even feel friendly and ask us how we're doing. So pretty good. How about you? And just so we can get rid of this error message we have up here for the when, we can add this else branch. And inside this else branch, we're just going to create a block as always. And we're gonna copy the when block, the one right here that says when random, and we're gonna insert it inside here because it will essentially be the same thing that we did above. And this will just make sure that if the user writes something that the program does not understand, it will still give a response that will be interpreted as something it doesn't know. So let's go ahead and change the first one to, I don't understand. And then we can change it to IDK. And finally, the third answer will be, try asking me something different. And that will take care of the else block. So, so far our robot can handle three situations. One is when the user says hello, one is when the user says, how are you? and when the user says anything else. And that is the basic concept behind the chat for this chatbot. But of course we want to make it so it can actually search items on Google, flip coins, solve math equations and tell the time. So the next thing we're gonna do under the how are you block is create the response that's gonna open Google and open the search for us. So to do this, we'll just type in message.contains. And for this one, we have to write open and the message should also contain the term Google. And I misspelled open here, so let's fix that, open and Google. Then we want it, of course, to open Google. So inside here, we can actually just import our open Google constant, and let's just import that. And that's all we have to return for that. I'll show you later how we use that, but that's enough for this. And for the search function, let's just go ahead and copy that one and paste it right below. And we're gonna change this one to open underscore search. And of course we need to change the query to search up here. So every time the user types in a message that contains search, it will return this string and we will use that later. And let's also remove the Google bit because we do not need it there. All right, so right above, let's go ahead and make the function that's going to return the time. And to do this, all we have to type in is message.contains and then the term time 
And then let's copy this and part over here with the arrow because we want to make sure it has a question mark just to make it a little bit more unique. So let's go ahead and create a block right under that. And the only thing we have to return here is the time dot timestamp. And that will take care of our time function. So let's just go ahead and add the comment here, get the current time. And up next, we're gonna create the math calculations. So to do that, all we have to do is message dot contains the term solve. And that will tell the program that if the sentence contains this term, we want to solve a math equation. So let's create the arrow and create a block. And inside the block, we have to go ahead and create a value, which is going to be the equation we want to solve. And that's going to return a string, which is nullable. And that's going to equal the message dot substring after. And that's going to take a term which we are going to insert as solve. So what this function does is search for this term in our string. And once it finds it, it removes everything before it and gets everything that's after it. That will leave us only with the math equation. And then we want to return a try block and let's create the catch block just in case something goes wrong, which is going to be a random exception. And we will just, uh, and we will just return, sorry, I can't solve that. But inside the try block, we can go ahead and create an answer. So we'll type in value answer, and that's going to equal the solve math object dot solve math. And we just have to insert the equation. And if that doesn't work, we're going to return zero. So with the Elvis operator, in case this is null, we return a string of zero. And then the final thing to do is return the answer dot to string. And that will take care of our math solver. And finally, the last one that we're gonna create is the flip the coin function. So message dot contains flip and message dot contains coin. And if it contains those two keywords, we are going to create a block with the code to flip the coin. So we're gonna create a random number, which is going to be from zero to one. And we're gonna call dot random. And then we're gonna use this to tell us whether the result is heads or tails. So we're gonna type in value result, and that's going to equal if r is equal to zero, then we're gonna return heads, else we're gonna return tails. And then finally, we want the robot to say something that seems quite human-like. So I flipped a coin and it landed on the result that was flipped. And that will take care of our coin flip. And that takes care of the final response that I wanted to show you in this video, because in the next video, we will go ahead and glue everything together so that our robot will actually be able to speak. But so far, I hope you got the basic concept of how this works. It checks for a message that contains the following words. And if it contains those words, it will return another string. And that will be the string that is inserted into the recycler view. So of course, you can add whatever responses you want in here. You can add whatever query you want in here. So if the user says, let's say Apple, you can say, you can tell the robot to respond bananas and so on. I mean, you can create whatever responses you want. But with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the final part. See you.